Hey, and welcome to another animation tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this infinite loop in Blender 2.81. We're going to be using the EV rendering engine. And um, just before we get started, if you guys haven't already done so, check me out in Instagram or Twitter. There's going to be um, links in the description below. I post a lot of cool stuff on there, um, a lot of cool inspiration and stuff for you guys. So if you want to check that out, that's below. So let's get right into this tutorial. Okay, so we need scene opened up in Blender. We're going to go select our camera here and a lamp, go X and delete because we're going to be using our default cube here. And then we're going to go into our front orthographic view, tab into edit mode, or just go to edit mode, whichever one you prefer. And then with all of these vertices selected, so make sure they're all selected, front orthographic view, hit R, and then type in 45 and enter. So that's going to rotate our mesh 45 degrees on the Y. Then we're going to go to face select, select the front face, holding and shift select the back face, and then X and delete faces. So you can see we have this guy right here, but we want to scale it 10 times on the Y. So go into your right orthographic view, and then we're going to go S, Y, 10. Type in 10 and enter. So it's been scaled 10 times along this axis. So then we're going to tab out of edit mode, and we're going to go and add a material. So click, go to our materials tab. We already have a material added here. Let's just call it material blue, for example. And then we can go and make an emission. So let's make that an emission and just make it blue for now. And then what we can do is go into edit mode again and we're just going to give this guy some loop cuts. So go control R hovering over it. And then we're going to roll it to about here, something like that. And then just right click to let go. And you can see we've added in some loop cuts. And then go back into object mode. And then we're going to go to a modifiers tab and we're going to go add modifier. We're going to add a wireframe to this guy. And we can see here a wireframe has been added. So you can go to the thickness here, mess around with this till you get something that you like. I'm going to go with something like that. Go to front orthographic view, and with your cursor in the center, make sure it's in the center, go Shift A. We're going to go to our camera, add a camera. And then we're going to go to our right orthographic view, G, Y, move our camera to the end of the tunnel here. Then we're going to select this guy here, go Shift D, right click to let go. And with that one still selected a new one, we're going to go to our modifiers and just get rid of the wireframe modifier. And then we're going to go to our edit mode. A to select all of this mesh in our edit mode. And then we're going to go Alt S and just move our mouse to scale this out like this. Something like that. Whatever you like. I'm going to go with something like that. And then tab out of edit mode. And this guy, we're going to create its own material. So go to the material tab, get rid of the blue, and go new. Make this an emission as well. And then we're going to go to our color, and we're going to make this kind of like a golden, no, a black, sorry, make this a black. And we want this actually to be a um, principle. So go to the emission, and actually just make that a principle BSDF. Sorry about that. So just make it a principle. Um, shader and we'll make the color kind of like black, not fully black, just kind of like a dark gray. Then we're going to go to our metallic, turn that up all the way to 1, and go to our roughness and make that 0.2 for now. So if we tab into our camera view here, hitting 0, we can go to Z and then go to rendered. And at the moment it doesn't look fantastic because we don't have any of the EV render settings enabled. So let's go to our, we'll click on the camera here, Go down here and enable somebody. So we're going to enable Bloom. That's very important. And the most important one to enable is the screen space reflection. So go ahead and enable the screen space reflection. And then drop this one down and just enable refraction as well. And you can enable ambient occlusion. It doesn't really make much of a difference with this one. And if you want to, you can go to the viewport and just make it something like 25 over here, just so we get a bit less noise. And you can kind of see what we're getting here. But to make this look a little bit better, I'm going to select this guy right here, the one that has the wireframe modifier, tab into edit mode, go to face select, just go to solid view. I'm going to select one of these faces at random, then go to the select, random select, and you can see here it's doing a random selection. You can go down to here, click on select random, and you can kind of play around with the seed. You know, I'm just going to go with something like that and yeah, I'm happy with that. And then go to our Materials tab. We're going to hit a plus, make a new material. So new. Let's call this one Orange. Sorry, cap locks is on. Orange. And I'm going to go make the color 
This time we can make it an emission, so make that one an emission. And we're gonna make it kind of like an RNG gold color. And let's make the strength free for now. And hit assign. So if we tab out of edit, edit mode now, and we go to our rendered view, we're gonna kind of see we have this effect added now. So I'm gonna just mess around with this thickness on the wireframe a little bit. I'm gonna go something like that. That looks quite good. Go to my materials, go to the blue, and I'll make this a value of three as well. And then I'm gonna to go to my world settings, and I'm just gonna make the world almost black, or actually just a solid black color. That's looking pretty cool. And now one thing we can do to make this look even more awesome is add a new object. So just go back to solid view, shift A. We're gonna go and add a UV sphere. And we're gonna kind of scale it down a little bit like so. Go to our right orthographic view, go to wireframe. I'm gonna take this guy and holding, selecting this guy first, holding a shift, gonna select my camera. And I'm just gonna click um, Alt P and then keep um, transform. So we're setting parenting the sphere to the camera. And if we grab our camera here and move it, we can see the sphere is parented. So go back into our view here, scale it up just a little bit. So if we go to rendered view, we can see now it is, um, we've got it here. And we don't want to enable smooth shading because we kind of wanted to have like this, like this disco ball effect. So we're gonna go add this uh, material. So go to material tab, go new. And let's just make this fully metallic. And let's come here to our roughness and turn it down a bit to something like this. And at the moment, you can already see that's looking quite awesome. And what we can do is go to our right view, go to orthographic, and you don't have to do this bit. It's, it's just an option, so you can go Shift D, shrink this guy down, go into the front view. And with this guy selected, hold and Shift, select the big guy, go Control P and just keep transform. So we've parented the smaller sphere to that smear, sphere. Then we go G and X, just move it to the side a bit, scale it down, and then Shift D, X, move one to the side like so. And with this one selected, we're gonna just go to our Materials tab, and we're gonna make this one orange, select this guy here, and just make this the blue material. So if we go to our rendered view, we're gonna see this. And so far it's looking pretty awesome. Um, you can just kind of come here with these materials, mess around with them a bit. Uh, I'm gonna make that a little bit darker, maybe bring the roughness down just a little bit to get a bit more reflection. Maybe not that much, just, yeah, you guys can mess around with it as much as you want. Um, over here in the bloom, uh, yeah. Can mess, just mess around with these. I'm, I'm gonna just go with something like that for now. And now we can simply get into our animation. Now that we've, we've created our scene, we have uh, made all the objects. So let's just go to solid view. And what we're gonna do is go to our right orthographic view, go to wireframe, and we're gonna make sure we're on frame one. So go to frame one, and with our camera selected here, right, this camera, we're gonna go I, and then insert a location frame here. So you can see here on frame one, it is inserted a keyframe. Now what we're gonna do is go to our, um, this tab here, and we're just gonna make this 150 frames, because we're gonna be working with 150 frames. Then we're gonna drag this all the way to frame 150 over here on the end. And then we're gonna find where we're gonna select this tube and we're gonna see where it ends. So it ends right there on this grid. So we're gonna take our camera, G, Y, and we're gonna move it all the way to where that starts, just like so. And hit I, location. So if we go to the beginning here, we can see it's there, and if we drag it, it's in the end of our tube, okay? And then with these two vertices, select these two keyframes, make sure you select them, hit T, and we're gonna make this linear. So it doesn't ease in and ease out. So that's just gonna be one linear animation. So it's gonna go here to the end. And then it's gonna start the whole thing again. So if we go into our camera view, go to frame one. Let's just enable our rendered view here. And let's hit play. This should look like a loop, more or less. So it's quite seamless. And at the moment, it looks quite noisy because it's in real time. Um, so what we're gonna do later is render it out, of course. So if you just go here in the viewport, you can make this 75, just to kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. So in fact, let's just give that a render. So give it a render. And that's what it looks like. It looks really awesome. If you want to, you can feed this through your denoising algorithm or whatever you have. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how we render this out. It's quite simple. All you have to do is go to your, click on this little printer thingy here and then go to the output. 
hit the file, go to your desktop or wherever you want to save it, hit accept, and then in the file format you're going to go PNG and you're going to make this an FFmpeg video. And you're going to go to encoding and then the container, we're going to make this an MP, MP4, so MPEG4 right over here. And we're going to just check these, so it starts at frame 1, ends at frame 150. That's all correct, uh, it's a 24 frames a second. And then we're just going to go to render and this is disable this here, so it doesn't use up too much memory. So go to render and we're going to just go render animation. And when this is done, I'll show you guys what it looks like.